I'm here ostensibly to talk about the S1, which is the new smaller eight channel uh, control surface, which I love. Um, but then also, fortunately, uh, we're running the latest version of Pro Tools, which is not released yet, but it's OK to talk about. I've been told it's OK to talk about this. Have they been talking about folder tracks yet? Oh, yeah. So folder tracks are awesome, and it's been, it's been a dream, let's say, for a very long time. So I brought a session, um, which we don't even need to listen to. I don't even need to hit play, but we can just talk about stuff. But this session was mixed probably a year and a half ago. It's a song by Rival Sons, um, which is, it was called Too Bad when I mixed it, but it's called something else now. And it's actually nominated for a Grammy, which is awesome. So I thought, well, I'll bring something that's relevant. But this was recorded long before folder tracks. So I was actually going to show you a little bit about how you can take an existing session and really quickly redo it to use the folder tracks, which is awesome. So I'll show you first with the S1 a little bit of like my workflow at home. So at home, I've got a Pro Tools dock, and now I've got two S1s. Before that, I had an S3. So I would have 16 faders on my control surface, and then I've got the dock, which has the focus faders. So I let the 16 faders on the S1s or the S3 just be 16 tracks of my session. And then I've got a focus fader. And then I've got it set up in my session. I don't know if this system is set up the same way, um, where if I had a dock, whatever track I click on would be the fader on the dock. So I could really, really quickly say, I want to ride the vocal, click on the vocal track. Now I know that that track is on my dock, but I still have my 16 faders of whatever happened to be showing. Now, I'm a very organized person with my sessions. And one of the things I do is, as I scroll through the session, you'll see there are yellow VCAs. And there's one for every group of instruments. So there's drums. Hey, Carmen. God, the whole gang's here. Um, it's old home week. I don't live in this country anymore, so I see people at NAMM. And that's it. And I think I've seen pretty much everybody I've ever met in the last three or four hours. So. I've got a drums VCA, I've got a bass VCA, and you might say, well, having a bass VCA is a little over the top. You only have one bass track. But it's just part of me being organized. It lets me work really quickly. Come down here, tons of guitar tracks, and I've got one guitar's VCA, and then one for lead vocals, one for background vocals. If there was percussion, there'd be another VCA. If there was some other group of instruments, like a bunch of drum programming, there'd be a programming VCA. And what it lets me do while I'm mixing is to very quickly solo and mute groups of instruments. So actually, is this the, the playback level right here? Or do you have a playback level? We can leave it pretty quiet, actually. There's no, no reason to, to blow people out. But what it means is you can see on this um, iPad here, yes, you can see. I have it set up. You can set it up to show you all of your tracks. I have it just showing my VCA masters. And what it means is I can leave this screen up and I can say I'm going to have it mute when I tap on these. Now I can hit play. And I can really quickly say I want to hear it without the vocals. And then, OK, cool, there's the drums. Put it back on mute. So it very quickly lets me navigate in gigantic chunks while I'm mixing. So probably 90% of the time, this is what the iPad on the dock looks like. And it's just showing VCAs, and I can just tap them. It doesn't matter what faders are showing on the control surface. It doesn't matter where I'm scrolled in the session. I mean, this session is pretty reasonable, and it's still several screens. So to scroll up, find the drum VCA, and then do something with it is a lot longer than just going over here, and I know the drums is first, because drums is always first. So it's an organizational thing, but it also lets me move really, really quickly. Plus, if I've got to print stems and whatever, I've got access to the groups of instruments, and I'm very careful about laying them out so they all work. Now, that's awesome. When you happen to have a control surface like this, then it also will spill that VCA's worth of stuff onto the control surface. So again, it doesn't matter where I'm scrolled on the screen. I can be tweaking vocals want to reach over and get the snare, the fastest way to do it is tap the drum VCA. Now I know my drums are on my control surface. Tap it again, I got all my tracks. Well, it's stuck in showing me just some things. But I want to see the bass, I want to see the guitars. And now I can actually page through the guitars. 
and they show up on the control surface. So I've got this access to the session that's always there. And it's one of the things about most people here probably grew up on control services or just working on the screen itself. But I grew up, because I'm old, on a console where if you put something on track 22 of the tape machine, unless you patched it somewhere else, it was on fader 22. And fader 22 was always right there. And it couldn't move, which is good if you wanted to find the thing that was on 22. But it's not the best thing in the world if you want to do a lot of work on the thing that's on channel one, because that's down here, and it's not in between your speakers, and you got to move. So the genius is having stuff be able to move. But with that flexibility, you now have to double check yourself all the time. You have to look and see, oh, hold on, what track is actually showing on here? Whereas by using the control surface to control what's going on there, I know my drums start at fader one of my control surface, and that's the kick. It is always going to be the kick. And if I want to look at the lead vocals, there it is. That's my lead vocal. And then I can come out, and now it just shows me all of my tracks. So it's a really fast way to navigate. And the cool thing, now we can talk about fader tracks. So I've already converted my kick and snare aux to folder tracks. So basically, it's like it's an aux, but it has tracks inside of it. And you can see that the track is actually indented to the right. So that shows you that it's a member here. And I can hide them, which, OK, I'm only hiding one track. Like, what's the big deal? But snare, well, that's two tracks. So I can hide that. And now I've got a little overview. And not only does it show me where there's audio, that's really important. But it also shows me it's two tracks. Now, what I'm going to do here, and this is something that is awesome, you don't have to go back to your older sessions and remake them at all. You just right click on any aux and say, well, now make it a routing folder. Now it's a routing folder. So now I can take my toms all the way through my kit smash and chuck those into the drum kit aux. OK, now I can take my kick and snare folders and throw them into the drum kit aux. So now, if I put this up at the top of the session and I close this, that's my entire drum kit on one track, which means it's also on one fader here. Now, it, it'll seem a little confusing to you, maybe. So the folder track is kind of like an aux track. But not all of the tracks have to go through that folder's audio routing. So I can actually take all of my parallel drum processing, some of which goes straight to the mix bus. It doesn't go through the drum kit aux at all. And that's just up to me for mixing, for flexibility. But if I really want to clean this up, I can throw this stuff into the drum kit aux too. Now, every single thing that has anything to do with drums is inside one folder, spill it out. Come on, you can do it. I've got to get used to clicking on the little widget. But now, this is everything. And it remembers what was spilled and what's not spilled. So if I have my snare aux closed, when I open up the folder that has the snare folder inside of it, it's still closed. So it looks exactly like how I left it. The way things solo and mute is very intuitive and awesome. You actually hear what you would expect to hear. You can solo a folder. And it will solo all of the tracks inside of it, whether or not they go through its audio path. And at the moment, the Yukon implementation for the folders isn't complete, but they will show up on this iPad as a different track type choice. So instead of spilling VCAs, I can be spilling folders. So I could spill my entire drum kit or just the snares. It's awesome. It's so flexible. And the way it integrates with the control service is already, even though it hasn't been like meticulously programmed, because Avid's been really good about this for years. They're very, very consistent about how they do things, which means that Pro Tools sort of thinks the same. So when you say, oh, hey, they're folder tracks, like, oh, OK, I know how that should work. And other than there being features you never even thought of, they actually work exactly the way you would hope that they would work. And they automatically work on the control services because they're not some crazy new thing. They are the version of stuff that's already been in Pro Tools, but it has more functionality, does more for you. So I've actually, uh, because I've been beta testing for, well, I've been beta testing Pro Tools for 17 years or something ridiculous like that. I started beta testing 
when they first started supporting a new bus chassis. Is there anybody else who remembers the new bus chassis? Yes, I had a Mac 2 SI with a new bus chassis, and then when I could put two Pro Tools cards in there, that was awesome. So anyway, because of that, I've been using the folder tracks, and I think there's only been a build for two weeks, maybe two and a half weeks with the folder tracks that actually works. I already, I cannot work without them. I will not work without them. I will travel with a beta version and work in it because I don't want to lose the functionality. So there's a lot more to it. There is a, there's a whole other type of uh, folder track which doesn't route any audio at all and is just for organizational things. So if you are a film composer, for instance, you have a template session with hundreds of tracks. You can organize all of those tracks, both for the MIDI and for the sample playback, into articulations, which are then organized into instruments, which are then organized into sessions, which are then organized into the actual orchestra. And so your percussion could be a folder that's got 30 subfolders. And well, I don't know how deep you can go. 30 might be pushing it. Nine. OK, so nine folders deep. But that means you could have a strings folder with a violins folder, with a first violins folder, with a staccato violins folder all within it, and they all collapse up, so you no longer have this gigantic, endless scrolling nightmare to find the stuff you're working on. You can have an iPad showing folders and automatically just spill them as you need them, and they'll open up. And there's some great key commands. Now, if you're setting up a session from scratch, which I'm not doing, but let's say I wanted to collect <coughs> these guitars and put them in an aux, but I actually wanted them in a folder, there are actually key commands to do it, so I can say, Put it inside a routing folder, and I'll just call it, well, we'll call it pink guitar, because for some reason there's a pink guitar. And now it creates a bus, it names a bus, it puts the tracks inside the folder, and everything is routed, and it's done, all in one keystroke. Awesome. I like it. So yeah, I like folders, I like the S1, and I like Pro Tools. And um, I was thinking that we could actually have some questions. We have six minutes and 45 seconds as I finish that sentence. So if there are questions that don't have to be about these particular things. But the only thing I would ask is that after we finish, don't come up and say one more question, because I've been talking for like the last nine hours, and I can't talk more than this. So if you want selfies or anything like that, totally cool. But no more questions after the thing. And I'm back here. 70 more times this week. So plenty of time if you don't catch me now. But there was a question here. Oh. Do you have a way to set up the inputs and outputs of the folder? Yeah, well, the, it has I.O. If you look at it right here, it has an I.O., an input, and an output. So it looks, yeah, it has a fader. Check, check. Oh, it has a, it has a input it has fader? A fader, it has a fader, it has pan, it has, it has all of the audio controls that an aux would have. But the genius of it is that not all of the tracks in the folder have to go through that aux. That might seem messy at first, but once you get your head around it, it is awesome. Because otherwise, what you would have is you would have the routing folders that would have to have the audio, so you could only organize certain things with those, and then you would have to use the basic folder, which only organizes tracks for other things. But now I can use a routing folder to collect all my drum stuff, whether or not I want it to go through. And the folder has a full complement of insert slots and send slots. So that because there's no reason to use an aux anymore. 90% of the time, every aux you're going to use, unless it's just for a reverb or something like that, if it's an aux that's collecting types of audio from somewhere else, make it a folder. And now not only does it do all of the audio stuff that the auxes does, but it also does all of the organizational visual stuff that the folder does. It's very, very cool. Yeah, I have a quick question. Uh, so you personally said that you work with the aux tracks. Now, personally, will you transfer that into a folder, like control yes. levels and all that, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. forget I mean, about aux? Yeah, this, what I just started doing with the drums, that's what I do now with the drums. My template has all of my auxes, because they're for either processing the drum kit or the lead vocals, or they're parallel processing. But more than half of them are folders, and the first thing I do, I set up 
when I get a session to mix, I set the tracks in the order that I want them in, and I set the colors to be the order I want. Then, once that's done, and I've made sure there's nothing weird left in the session I was sent, I import my template, which is a ton of VCAs and auxes, and that's it. There's no audio in my template at all. It's just processing. But now, that template is folders. So I bring in the folders, and I just start throwing tracks into the folders, organized, done. It just it makes it so much faster, because you can collapse them on the fly. There are key commands, and especially if you're using Yukon, like right now, there's a user button that has the command to open and close folders on it. So you just select the track, open and close it, which in effect spills it, because when you close it, those tracks are hidden and don't show up on the control surface. Open the folder, boom, there's everybody that's inside of it. And the fact that you can nest them is amazing, really cool. <coughs> I've blinded them with science. That's a 90s reference, by the way. Thomas Dolby, no, no. OK, a couple people. Well, just as an aside, my son actually went to high school with uh, a, a Dolby child. And there, his last name isn't actually Dolby. It's a little disappointing, I've got to say. We can't end on that. Come on, there's got to be another question. So here, OK. Will the folder work the same with instrument channels? Yeah, you can throw, yeah. In, you can throw any track you want, including you can put a VCA inside of a folder if that helps you organize stuff. So, so I can have an audio, uh, audio and some instrument channels in the same folder? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can put anything you want in the folder. Any Pro Tools track, including another folder, can go in a folder. They're, yeah, they're just there to organize. And they're very, it's very clever the way things nest. So if I decided to put, for some reason, all my snare stuff inside the kick, now it's indented even more. So you see visually on the screen exactly what the hierarchy of the tracks is. So you don't have to think like, oh, well, hold on a second. And then I can take the snare and drag it out one level, and that will dump it back into the main level of the folder. So it's. Top to bottom, like it's always been, but now you have this left to right bit. And it takes up a little more screen real estate, which if you're working on a laptop, sometimes you end up with an edit window that's that big, surrounded by other stuff. So you do lose a tiny bit of real estate, but that's fine with me. It's considering what you gain having it. Yeah, it doesn't, it's ridiculous how little space they actually take up. That could have been a much more cumbersome thing, but that it's really smart. And just adding the one extra little widget here, to open and close it. Um, and then also, this is really interesting. Because of that, there are now widgets for showing um, other automation. So instead of just having the little plus guy to fold this, so I can show you like three different guys there, and now you can collapse your automation lanes, all of them at once, without having to get rid of them, which you could do before, but it, it's tied into the way folders collapse. And so you have this very consistent UI way to make things take up more space or take up less space, to hide. And you know because when, uh, I can't remember exactly, but like there's a visual indication that there's stuff that's hidden, which is always really important to me. Like you have an indication of which automation lanes actually have breakpoints in them and things like that. It's really important to know there's stuff I'm not seeing. Just the fact that there's a folder icon means it's a folder, there's probably stuff inside. Yeah. Uh, it's good. There's no way I'd hear you without a mic. You should use both. I should. Um, it's a wall of sound thing. Hello. Check. Check. Cool. Um, quick question. How does it does it help at all with CPU when you group those folders together? I mean, those tracks. No. There's no. Folder? It's a visual thing. It's all visual. Yeah. Organization. It's completely visual. Yeah. There's no. I mean, technically, no. I, I can't imagine there'd be any CPU benefit. The only benefit would be, I suppose. If you've got like the worst GPU in the world and it didn't like to show waveforms, you're hiding all your waveforms. And also, um, there are, it's not every edit command, but you can do editing from this overview. There's a small subset of commands, because you, you can imagine you could get yourself into some really crazy trouble editing stuff that you can't see. So there's a subset of editing commands that actually make sense to do from here, and that's awesome. 
So you can do some copy and paste editing without having to open the folder. But yeah, CPU, I don't think there's any difference because your audio doesn't change at all. The session sounds exactly the same whether you use folders or not.